were at, another really cool thing, we were using the size menu. Let's get something imported back into our screen. Design library. We're gonna go down here. Let's, let's see what's in, oh, look at all the pretty quilt. So this is a fun one, of course, I'm a quilter. I love this kind of stuff to pieces. But you can take any of these quilting designs here or any others you might bring in, import them. Go up here, to, here's a really, here is a place where this size box really comes in handy, size. And I'm gonna turn on, keep the density and fill but I don't wanna do it by a percentage. Let's say I have a quilt with 10 inch blocks in it, okay? So if I have a Solaris, I can totally quilt a 10 inch block in the hoop. All I would do is put in 10 and preview, and it's automatically resized that. Now, the reason it's outside of this box, I have the nine and a half by 14 hoop selected. So all I would do, would go over here to this little hoop. Oops. I'm gonna click on okay. I'll pull up the hoop and change it to the 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Click on okay. And now as you can see, that will perfectly fit with a little room to spare all the way around the edge to fit exactly inside a 10 inch quilt block. But what if I didn't have the Solaris and I have the Altair Meridian Destiny machine? So I would just resize it by clicking on that little size icon, picking the, in, the width and height for inches, keep density, but uh, selected. And now on the first one, I'm going to put in nine instead of 10 and hit the preview button and okay. And reselect my hoop, the nine and a half by nine and a half and select okay. And now it will fit a nine inch block inside the nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. And then if I was ready to stitch that out, let's say I have my quilt hooped, I could go up here to the send button, send to network machine, I'll send it to the Solaris, I could send it to whatever machine I have connected, and now it's ready for me to pull up in embroidery and stitch out. Easy peasy. Pretty cool. Another thing we I want to explain is this. I'm going to bring in a different pattern this time. Let's see, let's go to music. I love musical notes. And we're just gonna use that one as an example right there. So <clears throat> we go under here to the tools. Of course, we, the texts is what we'll get into next week. We've already been into the shapes menu. And we'll explore that further. But see this little thing right here, the plus and the minus hour uh, magnifying lens? That's exactly what it is. That is zoom in and zoom out. If you click on the plus, you have a little magnifying lens with a plus. This is how you can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. But once you get in really far, it'll take us a second to render. If you wanna go back out, you can do magnification, the zoom out, or if you click on this third little box right here, click it down, you can get it to actual size. Just click on that and there's its actual size for its current stitch out. That's not the size it was when we first started, of course, but for the current size you have, there's the actual stitch out size. If you just click on this right here, that is actually will fit it to your screen. See how this entire window pane fit inside my screen? So just by clicking on that is how you get it back to this view right here. 
this icon here, the little hand, this is what's called panning. So if I had, let's, let's zoom back in. Say we're up here and I could, it does the same thing as moving the scroll bars. However, it's much more specific as to where you can scroll. I can take my hand, hold down the left mouse button and I can just drag it up to get to the area I wanna work on. Okay. I'm going to go back here and click on fit to screen and see the ruler. This is a really cool thing here. So maybe you want to measure and see how, how big that actually is. So what you can do is use this. See, I now have a ruler attached to my pointer. I want to know what this is. Yeah, I could go up here and look, but to get really precise, holding down my left mouse button to right there and now releasing it and clicking it again, double clicking it. Oops. See how I have a red dot there and a red dot there? If I come down here, this is of course gonna tell, tell me the height and everything that it's at. The width equals 0.95. The length, that's where my actual measurement is. So I actually dropped it right on the width of this. And that was so accurate because the actual width is 0.95 and the actual length is 0.95. That length is from red dot to red dot. Notice they're not exactly even. And that's why here it says, <clears throat> the height is 0 0.02. It's referring to the placement of the two red dots right there. To get rid of it, right click, click on your select button, and there it goes. Very useful little tool right there, especially when you're wanting to place a bunch of stuff. Say if you wanna do a bunch of different items. For instance, let's just clear that and bring over this other little musical note. And then we're going to go up here. We're going to select it, arrange copy, circle copy. And then I'm going to make me a circle. And I want a bunch of them in here. When I turn, drag my, I don't have, I do not have my finger depressed on the mouse button. When I drag it to the left, I'm gonna click one time there and see what that looks like. There's a musical note wreath. And that's really, really pretty cool. But just once again, <clears throat> now this is not grouped. So in order to center that, I would have to group it and then arrange it and move it to the center. And then if I wanted to stitch it out, I could send it to my network machine. Okay. But perhaps the one arrange copy I did not show you earlier is getting back to my single note. There we go. So I'm going to, if you ever get the hour, the magnifying lens, just click on this right up here where it says select that pointer and you get your pointer back. I'm going to draw a box around it to select, arrange copy, the matrix, oops, no, the matrix. Let me get rid of this. I don't want that. Back to select, there we go. Now the matrix, what this will do, check it out. You can fill a page. Notice as I'm dragging, it keeps adding boxes and boxes and boxes. I could fill this entire page with that one design by doing that right there. Oops, come here you. One more, one more. 
One left click sets it. It's working. And this is a way you could take a small embroidery motif and actually make, maybe you had a solid color piece of fabric and you wanna decorate it to use as new fabric. This would be a really cool way to do it with any small embroidery design. Pretty cool. But that's what the matrix does. You can fill it up as much or as little as you want to and repeat that. Mm -hmm.